Your first case. Awesome. What is it? Pro bono. Sexual harassment. Don't tell anyone I laid it off on you and don't screw it up. Got it. You can't handle it? I'll knock it out of the park. Easy clearance, Thomas. Just go meet the client. Hey, didn't I tell you to get some better suits? I spent $500. For how many suits? Five. What? You know what? I'd subpoena the personnel records of every woman who's left the firm during this guy's tenure. That's funny. That's exactly what I thought. Then what do you need my help for? I don't know how to fill out a subpoena. By the way, did you get her to sign the engagement letter? Yeah. What's an engagement letter? It's a piece of paper that keeps her from being able to sue us. Oh. Uh, hey, Donna, can you show me how to fill out a subpoena? Absolutely. And after that, do you want me to show you how to wipe your ass? Devlin McGregor's fighting the subpoena. They filed a motion to dismiss the case based on our lack of evidence. Good. Good. What do you mean, good? They don't want to hand over the files. You press word hurt, you're looking in the right place. Did you think they wouldn't fight back? Well, I... Now that you mention it. Oh, my bad. I keep forgetting you don't actually know anything. <laughs> the idea is, you make a move, they make a move. You go back and forth until one of you wins. Okay, what if they win the motion and the case gets dismissed? You're not as good as you think you are. This is good. We're gonna have some fun. We? Wait, I get to go? You didn't think I'd let you come along? No. Good instinct. I wasn't. But then I thought it'd be cruel not to let you witness my greatness. Okay, can I go get my bat? No. You're a true giver. Other side. Okay. Train wreck. Hey, uh, I'm looking for Renee. I'm Renee. I'm sorry. We don't sell skinny jeans at this location. Hey. Did Harvey tell you I was coming, or? Harvey Specter sent you? That's another story. Do you know your end scene? I don't. It's probably a medium. Mm. All right. Wait, wait, where do you think you're going? Into the room with the people. Wrong. That's the adult table in there, and you haven't earned the privilege yet. Well, I, I played air hockey with You him. need to go back to the office and file a patent for the phone. A patent? I don't know how to file a patent. Figure it out. Can't we do that after? No. And you keep talking, I'm going to start billing you. And my time runs $1,000 an hour. But isn't this our time, Mr. Hand? I stand corrected. Your fast times at Richmond High quote that proves you belong at the adult table. Hey, that's a great movie, and it spoke to a generation. Hey, you busy? Have you ever filed a patent before? I just got back from this meeting with Harvey and he wants me to file this patent, but I have no idea what that paperwork looks like, so if any help in this arena would be real. Did Harvey call you and tell you to do that? If it isn't the golden boy, you're uh, Harvey's project, right? What's your name? Mike, Mike Ross. Gregory Boone. So what are you doing here? Weren't you signing some big deal this afternoon downtown? Well, evidently I haven't earned the privilege yet. Get the adult table speech? And instead of watching the deal close, I get to file the patent. Yeah, those suck. Wait, you, you've done one of these before? I'm like a hundred, why? Uh, 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 uh. Nah. It's okay. You don't have to apologize. I took care of it. Patent claim. I negotiated a deal to get it done. What are you talking about? Gregory. He agreed to file it for me. And all I have to do is prove his Bainbridge briefs. Ah. That explains why he said to give you this. And why he called you a sucker. He called me a what now? Mike Ross, allow me to introduce the Bainbridge briefs. Stack. All of them. Wait a minute, are these all? Still printing? Yeah, I give it about a half hour. Oh, 
That's six printers, 23 pages a minute, 30 minutes. That's 4,140 pages. Plus all of this, which means the next time you negotiate a deal, I would suggest you get your facts straight. Uh, I am a sucker. Mm-hmm. When did that happen? Don't worry about it, okay? Boom. There you go. Look at that. <clears throat> Wyatt, let me call you back, okay? Five minutes. Bye. What's this? What is this? That's confirmation of the interference claim, which I proofed up top. What, you think you're working in a fraternity? You don't barge in here when I'm on the phone. Now, why are you so flush? Why am I so what? Your face is red. It looks like you've been in the sun. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, this morning, Lewis uh, took me to the tennis club. He didn't give you a speech about the, um, the ponies, did he? Oh, my God. How he likes to cut one from the herd? <laughs> the ponies. Was he wearing the headband? You know about the headband? With the, oh my god, are you kidding me with that hey, guy? if you guys were playing tennis all morning, how'd you have time to file this? I, uh, he, it was this morning actually, I was on the phone with them uh, and Lewis helped me. Look at me. And he did the snapping thing and Gregory. Look at me. You're high. Get out. Harvey, you don't understand, Lewis. Out. Donna? Get why back on the line? Forty-five. Nice of you to show up. Uh, yeah, I was up till five in the morning. I'm kidding. But Louis Lee wants to see you, and I don't kid about that. What does he want? I don't know. Louis doesn't let me in on his game plans. I kind of prefer it that way. Okay. Um, can you tell him that I have to see Harvey first? Your call. But uh, if you're going to be sleeping in your suits, you may want to keep a fresh one in the office. Is it that bad? It's worse. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> McKernan Motors. I was working on the due diligence. And why would that require you to look at the bylaws? State law requires a uh, summary be prepared in the event of a sale. Privately held corporations are exempted. Not if the sale exceeds 150 million. According to who? The state's website. I like to be thorough. Well, put it there, buddy. It's serious. Well, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Spector. I was wondering if you might need a hand sometime with one of your uh, matters. Uh, anyone? Well, Alan. Yeah, what's Aaron? I think that says it all, don't you? What are you doing? Uh, I'm looking for a restaurant. Where did you go for your rookie dinner? I came into the league a sophomore, and you better not be prioritizing that over McKernan Motors. I still need something to stall Stenzel. It's right here. What are you so irritated about? I spent a day with a top headhunter I know who couldn't produce one legitimate CEO candidate by Thursday. What about that Dominic Barone guy who runs production? He said he was responsible for the engines and clearly cares about the workers. Oh, he's not the guy. Uh, you're scared you can't convince him because he hates you. I get it. Nice try. You know you can't host your dinner there. That's a Wattel Lipton Klein restaurant. Okay, fine. What about this place? Yeah, that'd be great if it was 2004. Any of this matter? You see that guy over there by the facts? Take a good look. He's never gonna make partner. Okay, let me guess, because he threw a lousy rookie dinner. No, because he doesn't get it. Get what? He doesn't get that doing good work isn't the whole job. Part of getting it is that things like the dinner actually matter, even when you don't think they do. Look, you were giving me shit this morning because I come and go when I want to. You know why I can do that? Because when I got here, I dominated. They thought I worked 100 hours a day. Now, no matter what time I get in, nobody questions my ability to get the job done. Get it through your head. First impressions last. You start behind the eight ball, you'll never get in front.
You're late. Look, it was Lewis's pro bono. I, uh... Wait, that's my suit. My extra suit from my office. Yeah, it's uh, Lewis's fault. I went to the client's place. It was overrun with bed bugs, so I went back to the office. Oh, you tracked bed bugs into my office? No. Oh, you walked in there naked? No, Donna met me in the downstairs men's room. And... OK, Donna's fired, and you're buying me an extra suit. By the way, that's a three-piece suit. Where's the vest? Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Vest? Really? Says the guy with the bike helmet. Uh, safety first. Carverello versus Kerensky Properties. So how does this usually work? Uh, well, usually the trial starts, and uh, there's a judge, and then you know people say things. You've never done this before, have you? Well, I never drove a car before the first time I drove one, and I'm still here, aren't I? Oh, this is your first time? I'm your first? Don't worry, I promise not to be gentle. Frank, it's nice to see you one last time. Uh, if it pleases the court... It pleases the court to decide who speaks and when. Well, sit down. We're talking about $4,000 in withheld rent payments. Uh, yes, Your Honor, but we have receipts for repairs, lost clothing, as well as... $4,000, yes, Your Honor. She was talking to me. <laughs> Why hasn't he paid, Counselor? Uh, that one for you. Uh, bed bugs, Your Honor. I have receipts that show my client's financial outlay to rectify the problem far exceeds the amount. Housing department certified the presence of bed bugs? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Abatement? Excuse me. I'll do it. Nope. That's... Your Honor, this is an eviction hearing. The pertinent question is not habitability, but whether or not rent has been paid. Actually, city code states that rent may be withheld if the warranty of habitability is breached. In that case, we request to see the checks Mr. Ross's client has placed in escrow. The, the... Checks in escrow, pending the outcome of a rent abatement hearing. That's not in the code. It is the accepted practice. And therefore binding in this courtroom. Your client did put money in escrow, I assume. I didn't have any money left. I Your had to Honor, pay for it. Eviction upheld. But, Your Honor, he... Did you see me bang the gavel? That means step aside. Next case. You never forget your first. Oakhurst Capital has agreed to a $200 million licensing deal. We are at the goal line. How are we on brand protection? The contract is airtight. The only issue here is to get the joyful toy company to close. I'll go over it with Joy 101. Protocol in a meeting is to put your phone on silent. If it does ring, you answer it. Not in here. Don't feel the need to rush back when you're done. Tell me you didn't ask our client for a doggy bag. What can I say? Stacy insisted. Just got off with Joy McAvee's general counsel. It seems she had an epiphany. She wants less on her plate, not more. I thought you were going to close her. We need that doll money. I'm on top of it. Harvey, it took five months to structure that deal. Please don't make me set fire to your desk. I... All you had to do was have tea with the dolls. Donna, schedule another tea party with Joy as soon as possible, and text me the names of her girls. Oh, what a shock. You can't keep girls' names straight in your head. Just yours, Debbie. See, that's funny, because your name is Donna. Harvey Specter, I got your order right here. I didn't order a pizza. You've been served. Cab driver hit Ray, named me as a witness in a civil suit. I need to pay Travis Bigel a visit. Harvey, if you let me go talk to Joy, I know I can no. fix this. You don't send a puppy to clean up its own mess. Optimally, you don't even have a puppy. Ross, rumor has it you talked to Klein at $200 million? The deal's not off the table, right? It's just a speed bump. Dude, I think we just found him a new nickname. Speed bump. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in high school. They called you speed bump in high school? I thought you were all over the joy situation. Instead, you're all over page six. You wanted me to do pro bono work. This is it. Pro bono enhances a firm's image. 
This makes us look like wealthy bullies against an everyman cabbie. Does that seem like it enhances our image to you? I refuse to answer that on the grounds that I don't want to. <laughs> Someone had a fun night. Answer another call you shouldn't have? I, I, I didn't, I was... A piece of advice, when the big dog asks the puppy something like that, it's a rhetorical question. Got it. Keep an eye on her. You here to make sure I don't change my mind about the deal? No. Would you? You know, my father was a teacher. He worked hard, followed the rules. Last year, the district cut his pension to save their budget. I went to Wall Street so I could make some money before getting into teaching myself. I never thought I'd have to worry if they let convicted felons teach. Can I get you some water or something? <laughs> I'm just going to get you some water. Hey, I hey, got it. Thanks. So, uh, that girl you were with earlier, is she a friend of yours? Teresa, yeah. She, um, used to be paralegal here. We were pretty close. She worked at Pearson Hardman? Mm-hmm. And I just had the unique pleasure of giving her the summer intern tour for prospective employees. Really? Yeah. She's in her second year of Harvard Law, meeting with the partners as we speak. Huh. I know. We used to do everything together, and now if she gets this job, she will technically be my boss. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, Rachel. We need to talk about it. No, 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 thanks. No, 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 no. What? <sighs> She's gone. You left her alone to get her a water? What, she didn't want a latte? I was trying to be helpful. You were very helpful to her. You didn't see her, Harvey. She was scared. She was a wreck. Maybe that had to do with the fact that she was about to go to prison for 11 months. I think she was having the reaction of an innocent woman. And what was telling you that? Your years of investigative experience? <laughs> I just, I listened to her. That's all. Let me tell you something, OK? Just because a pretty girl tells you a story doesn't mean it's true. If she'd gone to trial, the burden of proof would be on the prosecution. Yet her own lawyer told her to take the deal, not to mention that innocent people don't run. I think this fell out of her purse. She, I found it here. Why are you telling me this now? Because you were mad at me before. So your answer to that is to delay giving me important information? Well, when you put it like that. OK, I got to smooth things over with the DOJ. That phone is our only lead. Try not to lose it before I get back, OK? I had a hard time sleeping last night. You want to know why? No. Because Gabby Stone is innocent. Oh, I slept like a baby. I don't think you believe that. You think she's innocent, too. You just don't want to pursue it. She's not our client. No, Morello is our client. And if someone else in that office is responsible and they do it again, that won't that put our client in jeopardy? Ooh, yep, I'm right, and you know it. And now you have the responsibility to investigate. Did you tell that guy at the basketball court that you were an attorney for the Department of Justice? N not explicitly. I mean, people hear what they want to hear. I won't impersonate a federal agent again. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Oh, hey, Mike. Um, can I give you my roommate's cat for the weekend? Let's get it over with. I have some actual work to do. No, no, no. It's not what you think. It's just very annoying, and I figured if you were looking after it, the cat's as good as gone, right? <laughs> Gentlemen, what's going on? Some sort of shenanigans? Uh, no, it's nothing. It's it's just stuff between associates. I said, what's going on? It's, Seth's just giving me a hard time for losing Gabby Stone yesterday. <laughs> oh, but we know at this firm that we don't dwell on our colleagues' mistakes, right? <laughs> I mean... Just because one of your fellow associates is incompetent doesn't mean you have to constantly remind us more of what a careless idiot he really is, right? <laughs> Some people like to use big words. Some people like to go for sympathy. But personally, I'm a little more go for the groin. Oh, hey, Mike. You mind dismissing the peanut gallery so we can talk, Kyle? I'm sorry, guys. Looks like Ross here came to plead for mercy. If you're here for the witness exhibit exchange, 
Don't bother. I already know who you're going to call and what evidence you're going to use. Actually, I'm not going to call any witnesses or present any evidence. Let's settle. Or I could beat you. The plaintiff has shown a pattern of making derogatory statements about my client. Hearsay. Not the emails. Which have no tone of voice and are subject to interpretation. Which is exactly why your argument is shaky at best. You can beat me in court. Kyle, there is a reason that Harvey chose me to be his guide. Do you really want to find out what that reason is? And how do I know this isn't some sort of trick? It's not a trick. This is our chance to stand out. Look, settling gets us in and out of there in five minutes. You drop the suit, and you and I spend the rest of the week making ourselves indispensable to the partners while everyone else buries their heads in Candyland court. I'm going against my better judgment in trusting you. Shall we have a deal? Council ready to proceed with opening statements. We'd like to submit a settlement agreement. Plaintiff is Honor. ready, Your Honor. Which is it, Counselor? Um, the counsel for the plaintiff and I agreed to a settlement yesterday. He must have misunderstood. We had discussed, but I never agreed to anything. Do you have a signed agreement? I, I'm. <laughs> no. Then we are ready to proceed. You have the floor. Thank you. On March 31st, 2010, Sydney Thompson was unwittingly recorded on cell phone. She made a joke, the type of joke that I'm sure every person in this courtroom has made at one point or another. And yet, she was fired. She was And yet, she was fired. Not only deserves her job back, she was suspect to the damage. She was Mr. Ross. HR guidelines, severance quotes, and stands in the waiting room. Did you sleep here last night? I wouldn't exactly call it sleeping. Where'd you get that suit? Uh, Rachel. No, I mean, Jenny gave it to Rachel downstairs. She slept over last night. Jenny did, not Rachel. Do I really need to be here when you fire this guy? You want to learn how it's done, right? I heard this guy's employment records, Harvey. He's smart, talented, loyal. Oh, and you feel bad for him. I'm shocked. Where's my smoking gun? The background check that confirmed Stan lied about his credentials. Yeah, it never came through. On it. You'll see that we've been more than fair. Fair. You think this is fair? We understand how difficult this must be, Stan, how you must feel right now. You have no idea what I feel right now. So I'm clear, you're not denying what we're presenting you with. You mean that I lied back when Drybeck hired me? But I'm not some scam artist either. I did go to college. I just couldn't afford to graduate. No one ever questioned it before because I'm that good with numbers. Did they find out all of a sudden? They didn't. This background check is five years old. What? It doesn't make sense. Is this the original? Yeah. So Tori knew? All this time. This is the same thing that happened to Paula. Who? Paula. Discovered some undisclosed income. The books weren't adding up. She brought it to me. The next thing I know, she is gone. I asked Tori about it, then I start getting shut out of meetings. They're trying to hide something, and they're firing me so they can. Hey, where are you going? I'm not signing some agreement. Are you kidding me? I'm getting railroaded. Should I go after him? No. You've done enough already. And as far as I'm concerned, that little associate of yours is to blame for all of this. That was an honest mistake. He knowingly revealed a client's confidential document. That is not a mistake. How many more chances are you going to give that kid? Oh, I didn't realize we were keeping score. But if that's the case, I still think he's coming out ahead. Whatever you're doing, stop. You know, you're going to want to see this. Paula O'Neill, the former Dryback employee that Stan mentioned, she filed a wrongful termination suit that mysteriously went away. Really? Let me see that. Come with me. Wait, you 
I think something funny's going on here. You know what, here's what I think is going on. You're sympathizing with Stan because you think he's you. That doesn't mean that you need to learn something from what just happened. Not the least of which is how anyone, no matter how valuable, can be let go. I can chalk up what happened with Stan to youthful exuberance, but Jessica can't. So if you want to work here, you better go home now, because if wait, she wait, sees she you, fire me? this habit of you empathizing with every client, it's not getting you anywhere. You want to work in this firm? You need to deal in facts, evidence, information that can hold up. That's what a real lawyer does. Come on. Come on. Damn it. What are you doing? Uh, nothing. I'm just sending some faxes. Stand down. They're stuck, Donna. What are you going to do? That's ridiculous, right? I've tried everything. I hit, I've already done that, and it didn't. Whatever. United International wants to buy the tablet. Ah, uh, whatever you do, don't say anything to Lewis. Kelsey Price does not want to sell. Not a word. Thanks. Sorry, Harvey. You set me up. No, Lewis, you set yourself up. The sales offer was meaningless until you read it. This is cheating. You cheated, Lewis. You broke the rules, and you have to pay the price. People may think that lawyers will do anything, that they can do anything. Now, I'm not willing to accept that, OK? You can't go skirting the rules and justify it because you think someone else broke the rules, OK? You cheated, and you lost. End of story. Harvey, I won. His play acting by the fax machine, it was so obvious. I found out Kelsey owned United International. I thought if they wanted the paper so badly, how much would they overpay for it? 50%. Harvey, you overpaid 50% for a business so buried in expenses from the employee deals that I made. It could barely stay afloat. And then all I had to do was convince Madison to sit back have fun, watch your sister fail miserably. I won. Your client got what she wanted. So did ours. Jessica asked to make everyone happy. Everyone's happy. It's a draw. Just hold on a second. You tell me the truth right now. This is this a win to you? Fine, Lewis. You win. You were a step ahead. You got Mike. 10 days. You think I want him now? I just wiped the floor with him. <laughs> <laughs> 